Chapter 21 Then Satan stood against Israel and incited David to number Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the army, Go, number Israel from Beersheba to Dan, and bring me a report, that I may know their number. But Joab said, May the Lord add to his people a hundred times as many as they are. Are they not, my lord the king, all of them my lord's servants? Why then should my lord require this? Why should it be a cause of guilt for Israel? But the king's word prevailed against Joab. So Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came back to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum of the numbering of the people to David. In all Israel there were one million one hundred thousand men who drew the sword, and in Judah four hundred seventy thousand who drew the sword. But he did not include Levi and Benjamin in the numbering, for the king's command was abhorrent to Joab. But God was displeased with this thing, and he struck Israel. And David said to God, I have sinned greatly in that I have done this thing. But now please take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly. And the Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say to David, Thus says the Lord, Three things I offer you. Choose one of them, that I may do it to you. So Gad came to David and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Choose what you will, either three years of famine or three months of devastation by your foes, while the sword of your enemies overtakes you, or else three days of the sword of the Lord, pestilence on the land, with the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the territory of Israel. Now decide what answer I shall return to him who sent me. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence on Israel, and seventy thousand men of Israel fell. And God sent the angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. But as he was about to destroy it, the Lord saw, and he relented from the calamity. And he said to the angel who was working destruction, It is enough. Now stay your hand. And the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David lifted his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, and in his hand a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. And David said to God, Was it not I who gave command to number the people? It is I who have sinned and done great evil. But these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand, O Lord my God, be against me and against my father's house. But do not let the plague be on your people. Now the angel of the Lord had commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and raise an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. So David went up at Gad's word, which he had spoken in the name of the Lord. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. He turned and saw the angel, and his four sons who were with him hid themselves. As David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David and went out from the threshing floor and paid homage to David with his face to the ground. And David said to Ornan, Give me the side of the threshing floor that I may build on it an altar to the Lord. Give it to me at its full price, that the plague may be averted from the people. Then Ornan said to David, Take it and let my lord the king do what seems good to him. See, I give the oxen for burnt offerings, and the threshing sledges for the wood, and the wheat for a grain offering. I give it all. But King David said to Ornan, No, but I will buy them for the full price. I will not take for the Lord what is yours, nor offer burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David paid Ornan six hundred shekels of gold by weight for the site. And David built there an altar to the Lord, and presented burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called on the Lord, and the Lord answered him with fire from heaven upon the altar of burnt offering. Then the Lord commanded the angel, and he put his sword back into its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him at the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite, he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses had made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering were at that time in the high place at Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, 
ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds, and he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. Hello and welcome to Bible Time. Today, First Chronicles chapter 21. David was influenced by Satan to do evil act of counting the numbers of his army. This was because David relied on the strength of his army rather than on God. And the Lord was displeased and gave three options of punishments for David to choose. Three years of famine or three months of defeat by the enemy or three days of the sore of the Lord. He chose the third option because he knew that God was great in mercy and that he rather have the punishment from the Lord, not from their enemies. So 70,000 people died during the plague for David's sin. David built an altar and he began to sacrifice, asking the Lord to remove the punishment. And the Lord heard him and stopped the punishment. And now Acts chapter 16, verse 16 through 34. After encountering Lydia, Paul and Silas went to pray and cast out a demon of a slave woman. Her boss was angry for she no longer had the power of demon to make money. They dragged Paul and Silas, beat them, and then chained them and put them into prison. During the night, Paul and Silas pray and sing to God in the dark prison. And there was an earthquake that happened and all the doors of prison was open. The guard thought that they all escaped, so he tried to kill himself. That's when Paul said, don't do it, we're all here. And the guard said, how can I be saved? And Paul says, Believe in the Lord and you and your household will be saved. And so Paul preached the gospel to all in the household and they believed and were baptized. So you might be wondering why Paul and Silas, they are doing the right thing. They are preaching the gospel, doing the work of God. Why did they have to go to prison? Well, here's the reason why. The reason is because God wanted to save this guard and his household. Even in the times of our difficulty, we have to understand God has His will and they continue to do the work of God no matter where they land in, in the situation. They preach the gospel and kingdom advance. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. We know that, God, you work in a mysterious way. Even in the prison, in the dark moment, that they were able to preach the gospel to the guard and his household where you had in mind. So, Father, help us to believe whatever situation we might be in. Help us to know your will, that, God, that you will work through us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.